You know, I never explained in my videos how I hook up my pieces and why they hook up the way they do. If you can see here, I already put them in my board because I'm only one person holding this camera. It's very hard to do things at the same time. But you see how I got this on the negative rail? And this jumps over here to the very first pit of the rows here. These little columns, I mean. And then you got this uh, little LED that jumps over this bridge. And then you got my other wire here that will go to my GPIO on my uh, Raspberry Pi. And this wire here on the end goes to the ground on the main breadboard power supply that I use, as you saw in other videos if you looked at them. But the reason I hook these things up like this, like the way I do, look at the side underneath, the underneath, the underneath side, you'll see two long skinny rails. They're the negative and positives on uh, this end too. And the little metal segments that are going this way. And the bridge here is empty. And this is up here, white plastic is all empty too. Just the metal is all that can conduct electricity. But if I was to put a light, let's say right inside the same row of columns without jumping over a bridge, it wouldn't power. I need to build the power to where the circuit won't close. Like it won't stay open. It'll actually close and fire. So this is why you gotta do things this way. And you gotta be careful what kind of breadboard you buy. I mentioned that in one of my short videos at the very end of a video. I use a Jimical breadboard and there's prototype systems that are really good too, apparently. But I got a Jimical one I just played itty meeny miny mo and pick a giant pick a a Jamico and that's all I did, but I don't regret it. It's a very good breadboard. And uh, I love it, but this one here is just a piece of crap one that I, I took apart. But my Jimical ones, they're, they're a gym, they're good. The metal in here was a little bit cheap. It wasn't assuring enough. It, the lights would shimmy and shake and just a real mess. And uh, so I'm glad I, I I know the difference now that what you got to be careful with the buy. But uh, it looks like a good common breadboard, you know, this, the same kind of layout and everything. Positive, positive and negative down here and same here so you can use either side of the breadboard if you like but you always got to make it so your stuff jumps over some kind of a bridge like you see here or you can even put the light this way you can actually put the light this way you can even put the light that way because it's still on separate columns it's not touching, it's separate columns. Okay, you got your resistors like this. Still on the negative rail, but only you turn the light sideways. And you got the other pin that still goes to your GPIO on your, either your Gina or your uh, Raspberry Pi. But this is somewhat how you can do these little layouts with simple things. Just remember that the columns don't touch each other, but they do run along the same column, these little holes. They're not separate holes, they're only separate going this way. Just like on the back, the, no power can jump along this way unless you make it jump along this way. But if I, if I was to use a, a, a light in here, only this thing here, it'd cancel out the power. There wouldn't be no power at all. It'd just go through the metal, that'd be it. But other than that though, that's how some of the ways you can hook up a breadboard. And it's easy to do. It's not hard. You can just go all kinds of different ways. But I, the, the, the main tip I like to use is, I like to have my my lights, my, my power bar this way, where I'm using one to power up any resistors I got on this negative rail. And I usually like to have my light in the first example I showed you. I don't usually like to have it sideways because it takes up a lot of space. And I wouldn't have been able to fit 24 LEDs on one of my videos if I had it done it that way. So I did them completely horizontal all across but this is just a little bit of a breadboard tip to, just to tell you guys this is how you can, this is how I've done things and just kind of watch out what kind of breadboards you buy research before you buy them because every breadboard is not the same okay just remember that because you're going to kick yourself in the butt if you buy something that's a piece of crap like this one here okay this is actually a good example Pretend the battery I'm using is my Raspberry Pi. Just pretend it's that. It's the same kind of hookup. The, the, the ground is, is connected to the battery, the, the bigger knob there and the little positive one there. 
is to the light. Okay, and see how I got the same example? You see that? Now you know how it hooks up. Now we're going to try it the way I said I was going to do it to see if it works or not. To see if I'm actually right if we put this light on the same row of columns without jumping over anything. As long as we can jump over something, we'll be able to do it. We'll see if we can do it. Now, if you notice, that's impossible to do because even though I got this showing here as going through the positive lead and the negative lead and the touching, I, it's hard to do it to prove it to you do it both ways here because I'm holding only one man holding the camera. But I already did try both ways and it doesn't light up. So it just goes to show you that you always need to jump over some kind of a bridge or between columns, but you can't work with the light on the very same column. It doesn't seem to work. And then at the same time, if it did work, you're using more wires than you'd really want to anyway. So that's this would be a big no-no, as you can see. See, I was actually plugged into the same kind of column. That will never work. You, you think it would work. You actually think it would work, but it can't because there's nothing connecting anywhere. That's not even connecting. Nothing's connecting. And if I was to connect this like this, worst I can do is blow the light up. Oops. See, nothing's happening. Now we're going to reverse it. See, no matter where I put it, it won't, it just cancels out. Even though I got it there, it still cancels out. So that's a no-no, you can't, uh, it won't let you do that no matter what. So that's another tip to remember. Now we're gonna put it back the right way. Now see this little short lid here? That's gonna go to the resistor facing it. That faces the resistor because it's a negative. It's called the cathode end. There's an anode end and there's a cathode which is the shorter end of the LED. Now we're going to go like this. And put this guy right here. Then when we light up, we should light up fine. See that? It's because I'm over a bridge and I'm allowing the power to go through the, the light instead of just straight through to the legs and not doing anything. Now that's my, now you know why they make breadboards the way they do. Okay, once again, see how I got this, the, the, the next layout like I showed you? This layout I hardly ever use because the lights would just take up too much space. But there's a time and place for a layout like that. But the column is, the, the, the positive wire is going to the bigger lead right there, the longer leg. And it goes across, it jumps over the column. It can't go through it, it has to jump over to go through the medium, which is the light, the load. Okay, it has to go through that light. It can't go just through just empty space. So that's why it goes like that. It's actually jumping over the columns. And then this here, the flow is going to right straight to the negative register through that column on the negative uh, LED lead, the cathode. And that's how it's doing it, and I'm still there. And like I said, but the battery is my Raspberry Pi. It's doing the same thing, basically, just powering a light, but it, it would hook up that same matter, such that the, the, the red wire would be hooked up to an actual GPIO pin, such as these little rip orange sockets down here that I made or along the side here of this cobbler, and even on the other side. But I try not to use the cobbler much for the actual directly. I like having little wires like that. Looks more neater. Unless I have to have other little extra wires coming out of any wire, but then I use all the GPIO port numbers to do that. And that's where that comes in. And this here I will always go to the ground. This, this black wire here, it'll always go to the ground, similar to this one here. 
That's what it'd be if it was a real pie. But that's just uh, another one of the ways you can hook that up and now you know pretty much how a breadboard works, I hope. Other than that, there's all kinds of videos on it on YouTube. I'm pretty sure it's just that this camera's not that clear, but I still think you get the idea. I hope. Let's turn the light off for a minute. See that? But uh, this is how it's done. Hope, uh, hope this helped.